Hello and welcome to About Derm Time. My name's Dr. Pham and today I wanted to talk about a hair loss treatment that's been trending all over the news and that's oral minoxidil. Now this is an old medication that's getting a lot of publicity so I wanted to break down the most current data that we have and give you my unfiltered experience using this medication. So let's go. Okay, so let's actually talk about minoxidil. Now this is a medication that for sure is tried and true and has a lot of evidence-based data showing it actually helps with hair growth. It was originally prescribed to help control blood pressure, but when patients were using it for this intended purpose, they actually observed an unintended result of excessive hair growth. Now we're not entirely certain, but we think it works by shortening the telogen phase or the resting phase of the hair and lengthening the antigen phase or the growing phase of the hair. This results in longer hair and thicker hair. I went into detail about the hair cycle in a prior video. I'll link it down below or somewhere here. So check that out if you haven't. Now minoxidil is available both topically and orally. And for my patients who have hair loss, specifically pattern alopecia or thinning over the years, that using minoxidil is practically a requirement. Why? Because number one, it's inexpensive. Number two, it's available for you. And number three, it's proven. So let's look at the data. Now in this first study published in 2019, they looked back in time of 41 men who underwent treatment for hair loss and either received 2.5 milligrams or 5 milligrams daily of oral minoxidil as part of their regimen. 25 of them used other forms of treatment and 16 of them used only minoxidil. What they saw was clinical improvement in 37 patients, that's 90%. With 11 of these patients, that's 26.8% of the patients showing marked improvement. Four patients stayed about the same. Also important was none of them got worse. Now of the patients who used just oral minoxidil, all of them had great improvement and six of them had really great improvement. Now one of the downsides is that this study was retrospective, meaning they were looking back in time at the exposure and also it's a small sample size. So we lean towards stuff like meta-analysis or bigger studies that aggregate a lot of information to see if they can draw the same conclusion. So let's look at another article that was published in 2021 and this was a larger review of 17 studies and it confirmed that even one milligram per day helps with female pattern hair loss. Another showed a decreased shedding in 33% of the patients. And for men using five milligrams per day dosing over six months, they demonstrated significant improvement in 43% of the men. And it looks like as of right now, men need a higher dosing to get the most bang for their buck. Um, but there isn't any data that tells us what the perfect dose is for any one person. Now here's the kicker. We find that the evidence doesn't necessarily support that taking it by mouth is any better than putting it on the scalp. In this study published in 2019, they split up 52 women into two groups, one group getting oral minoxidil and the second group getting it topically on the scalp. And what they found was there was no significant difference between the two. They both got improvement and they were both safe. Now for the topical formulation, there's the 5% and the 2.5% and for sure the 5% is definitely superior to the 2.5% in terms of how fast it works and how well it works. Now the upside to using topical formulation is that you avoid the potential side effect of leg swelling or increased heart rate or if you get up too fast you can get a little dizzy. Now the downside is that some people just don't like the messiness of putting something on their scalp, the feeling of an ickiness, and also sometimes the hairs get in the way. But if you don't have any hairs, usually that's not a problem. But um, it can potentially cause what we call an allergic contact dermatitis or an irritant contact dermatitis just from the, the vehicle itself. Now one of the things that you have to look out for when you're taking it by mouth is that you literally have no control of where your hair grows. 
Now for some men who are naturally pretty hairy and it's more socially acceptable, they don't really mind. But for women, it matters so much because you don't want hair growing on the side of your face or on your cheeks or anywhere else that you didn't want hair in the first place. So it could potentially look worse. So we gotta be careful there. Because in that same study, they found that hypertrichosis or excessive hair growth was more common when you took it by mouth versus when you put it on the scalp. Although this side effect was very mild and well tolerated, it could be frustrating. Some people did nothing about it and some people just waxed it. Okay, so in my experience, oral minoxidil has yielded some favorable results for a lot of people, but for some, we just don't get as much progress as we had hoped. So here's the truth with pattern alopecia or androgenetic alopecia. We are essentially trying to paddle upstream, going against nature of what was gonna happen, okay? We are fighting against nature here. So some paddles just work better than others and we won't know unless we try them. I feel like with minoxidil, the patients who are a little less compliant um, with their topicals because it's somewhat of a burden to put it on their scalp, remembering to use it every day, and also, like I said, the icky sensation they might feel when they put it on, the pill form is a great option. I mentioned the side effects. This could include leg swelling or increased heart rate and unwanted hair growth. But the risk is generally very low given the dose is especially low. It's a fraction of what we use for its original FDA indication to control blood pressure. So for healthy patients, I've never seen an issue with it. But if you have problems like heart disease or problems controlling blood pressure, we have to be more careful here. The good news here is if you do experience any side effect, you can always stop and switch to the topical version because the medication actually has a very short half-life, so it works its way out of the body very quickly. So what I'm trying to really say is if your dermatologist thinks it's a good option, you should give it a try. Here's a really important thing to know though. When you first start minoxidil in any form, there's a temporary period where you get an initial excessive shedding. This lasts for about three to six weeks. When you experience it, it can be very freaky and you might want to quit. But what I can tell you is that this is very normal, it's expected, and those hairs will grow back, rest assured. You just gotta keep going. The other thing is topical minoxidil is available over the counter, so most insurances won't cover it, but the oral pill will be covered most of the time, so it might be cheaper that way, and that's a nugget to consider. Now the New York Times article actually dives into a topic that I find is quite unique to dermatology, in that most treatments that we have for a lot of dermatologic conditions are like the chocolate chip cookie discovered by accident. Now when we use these treatments and it works, we look like geniuses. Yeah. But when it doesn't, it can be quite frustrating and patients sometimes can feel like they're like guinea pigs and experiment and they end up losing motivation to keep going or have a fear of some unwanted side effects from the treatments. But that is the reality of dermatology. Now being a pharmacist and being trained in all the mechanisms of action of all these medication and the side effects, I personally find it uniquely fascinating to be able to take a medication's unintended effect and use it to our advantage. Luckily for dermatology, it feels like a big giant support group of physicians who are making little micro discoveries here and there and sharing it with everyone so we can use it to best help our patients. I find this super cool. The one disadvantage though is that nothing we use is ever FDA approved for the hundreds of unique skin conditions that there are and there's always the pain of trying to get it covered under insurance. While we have the best intentions to treat you, we might not be able to, but that's a rant for another day. Now my final thought on this is minoxidil is a really great medicine that's available and it works very well for most people. But sometimes, like I said, people don't always get the response that they want. And so we end up having to stack other treatments on top to get additional benefit. This includes 
medications like finasteride or spironolactone, which will target the hormone receptors in the hair that sometimes influences hair loss or hair thinning. And some patients get really good results with stacking those medications with PRP or platelet-rich plasma, which is an in-office procedure where we harvest your growth factors from the blood and inject it directly into the scalp to stimulate hair growth. So for all of you out there who are experiencing hair loss or hair thinning and feeling hopeless or defeated because nothing's working, well, just know that there are many options out there for you. Call your derm and let's get to work. Remember, the process of getting your hair back is a marathon, not a sprint. It will require a ton of patience, a ton of commitment, and consistency. But if successful, you'll regain your confidence and your self-esteem. And let's be honest, isn't that what we're really after? Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please click like on this video and consider subscribing to help me grow this channel. I'll be putting out new content every week. So have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one.